Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your Miracle Mindset Monday for this week. So remember, with our Miracle Mindset Monday, this is a generalized reading for the week. There are no personalized readings. If you are interested in your own personalized reading, then please go visit my website, awakeningmiracles.org. So for this week, as I was meditating this morning, I got a beautiful, uh, we can call it invitation, to really begin this week by observing our thoughts and really seeing where we're jumping in to judgments about things. Because what we have to remember is that all too often, we do not really question those judgments. We just accept them as fact. And, you know, that ju- usually the judgments that we make are not really helpful to us. They are more destructive. So a challenge that I would like to put forth, an invitation I would like to put forth to you this week is as you go throughout your week, as you go throughout your day, you don't have to do it for the whole week. Maybe you choose a day. Maybe you choose two days to try this. But what I would invite you to do is when you begin to see a judgment rise up, be that about a person, place, thing, situation, or even idea, I want to invite you to use one of my very favorite sayings from A Course in Miracles, and I have shortened it extremely so. And my favorite saying is, please use this for the coming of my peace instead of for my destruction. So anytime you start to have that judgment coming up, anytime you start to really be like, oh, well, this is bad. This is terrible. What a terrible, awful day or what a terrible, awful situation. Spirit, please let me use, please use this for the coming of my peace instead of for my destruction. So that's just something I wanted to put out there for everyone to try. You don't have to do it all week. You can do it for a day. You could do it for an hour. You could even do it for, you know, the the whole entire week if you choose. But that's just something that I thought would be a great mind training tool for you to begin that process. So this week we are using the frequency tarot to tell us the frequency that we need to embody this week. Then we're going to be using the wisdom of the hidden realms to tell us what's blocking us this week or what is the hidden belief that may be there. And then we're using the uh, gateway oracle to give us some affirmations and mind searching questions we can ask ourselves. So let's jump right in to our reading for this week. And I want to bid everyone a beautiful good morning. I thank you for being here and I thank you for for sharing. All right. Ooh, beautiful. Two, and then one more, please. Okay, so these all have to go together. Okay, so our first card for this week is all about self-awareness and really being, excuse me, self-aware. Now, when I talk about self-awareness, what I mean is really being aware of who is the I that is feeling this or who is the I that is upset by this? Being really aware of which aspect of yourself you are in tune with at that moment. And that goes right back with our judgment. Remember, the ego is going to judge everything based on separation. While, you know, the spirit, that the truth that is in us, the unity that we are, is going to judge everything for for us that's going to help us. So we really need to be aware this week, okay, who am I feeling this with? Who am I viewing this situation with? 
as I see that, I really get to be able to see the higher purpose in it. And, you know, like I said, we can use a situation for our destruction or we can use it for the coming of our peace. Every situation can be a backdrop to really helping you to come into your peace, can really be helping you to not only come into your peace, but really begin to heal some old beliefs that no longer serve you. As we do that, we really get to have this beautiful emotional expression. You know, self-awareness isn't just about, okay, this is who I'm feeling it with. It's really about, okay, what am I feeling, you know, who am I feeling this with? Who am I viewing this situation with? And then being able to express that emotion, not spew it. Now, there's a big difference between emotional expression, which is telling someone how you feel and being like, this is how this makes me feel. And then spewing, which is basically, this is terrible, this is awful, everything is terrible, everything is awful, and just kind of continuing to express the same idea again and again and again and again and again. And you're not really doing anything with it. You're just constantly complaining about the exact same thing. And what we have to realize is with self-awareness, self-awareness is I recognize that this is what I'm feeling. I am able to express it in a healthy and constructive way that it not only expresses how I feel, but also lets the other person know how I'm feeling in that moment. Then we have uh, this card, which is the selves, and it goes right back to that self-awareness and really being aware of, like I said, who is the I that is feeling this? Am I in, you know, my victimhood? Am I a here? Am I there? What part of myself am I really tuning into as I am feeling this or as I am expressing this? in whatever way, shape, or form. So absolutely beautiful. So now let's go to the wisdom of the hidden realms and let's see what other messages we have for this week. So remember, this deck is going to tell us what we're hiding from or what's going to be kind of our blocks to our self-awareness, our higher purpose, our emotional expression, and really being aware of the self that we are embodying. All right, so we have one, a beautiful two, three, and then we need one more, please. Beautiful. Okay, so. Let's take a look at this. So our first card is the Rainbow Prince. This is about compensation and preservation. Okay, so absolutely a beautiful card. So I always like to, from this deck, read the, the little thing of Abba she has above it. So hold on one second. Let's go to number 26. So when the rainbow prince appears as an ally, he reminds you of the divine law of compensation and the law of receiving. After a rainstorm you've endured on your journey, the rainbow prince brings a pot of gold, which is the result of you using the elements of your inner light and reaching into the sky until you touch the material realm from the other end. It isn't always an easy process and hard work must be rewarded by compensation. When you align yourself with the energy of giving the highest value, your compensation is inherent in the act itself. But the message here is more than that. The Rainbow Prince says to keep your sights on the sky after the rainstorm and you on the rainstorm that may have upset your life, follow your bliss to the pot of gold waiting for you. Preservation or perseverance pays off and your reward will gather 
will be greater than you ever imagined. So here, you know, we're invited again to really come into that self-awareness so that we can see the rainbow. You know, this actually, this card goes perfectly with the first two cards, self-awareness and higher purpose, because what we're asked to do is we're asked to really come into ourselves. We're asked to say, okay, you know what? Yes, there is a situation happening, but spirit, please use this for the coming of my peace instead of for my destruction. Let me see the blessing here. Let me see the belief that is being reflected to me as I am going through this situation. You know, and the beautiful thing is if you're willing to do that, if you're really willing to do that work, you're going to see some beautiful results. Then we have the Arrow master, hitting the mark, intention, and detachment. However, he's coming in the reverse position. He's challenging us this week to really be willing to see the emotion, express the emotion, but not attach to it as the truth of who we are. Yes, we're going to have good days. Yes, we're going to have bad days. But the key here is is that we're able to express the emotion so we don't get attached to it, so we don't stay in it, so we're not stuck in, you know, the victimhood self or in the pity party self or in any of that stuff. We must be willing to express the emotion and that is just letting it go. I express it, this is how I'm feeling, and now I can choose a brand new emotion. And that is the beauty. You have the ability to choose to express the emotion and detach and let it go. As we do that, we then have the high Lord of gratitude and service, selflessness, humility, conscious action. And so once again, this is coming in the reverse position. So this is a challenger. And the challenge of this card is really to remain open, is really to remain in taking a conscious action, not a reactive response. Okay. And that's really, really key here for this week, because as we're going into this week, we see that we need to be self-aware. We see that there's going to be some triggers this week. And instead of reacting the way that we always have, and then of course getting the result that we always got because we're acting the exact same, we are reacting the exact same way we always have, we're really willing to take this, you know, different approach. You know, we're really willing to be like this man and, you know, sit there with this lotus blossom and say, you know what? Yes, this is happening right now. And I can take a conscious step to respond instead of react. Okay. Now I'm also going to read a little bit from that card. That is card number two. We're going to see what other wonderful wisdom comes. When the high Lord of gratitude and service comes to challenge you, he signals a time for deep self inventory, asking yourself if your desires are driving you to become a more self-serving person. Have you forgotten to help others? Are you focusing on arriving at your goal or destination and that you've become isolated from ones who care for you? Are you, or you can also, oh goodness, sorry, I lost my place there. Uh, do your ambitions relate to making yourself special apart from others or better than they are? Have you been coming into a competitive or, en or envy driving you. The high Lord of gratitude and service challenges you to accept his gentle gift in the form of a new perception of wealth and ambition. There is an ancient saying scrawled on an old stone wall. True ambition is not what you believe it to be. No focus on winning a jeweled prize, no amount of pomp or circumstance. We achieve true prosperity. True ambition is a deep desire to live usefully and walk humbly under the grace of the divine service to all. 
So absolutely beautiful. So once again, an invitation to come back in, you know, do that self inventory. And that actually goes really well with the arrow master as well, because the arrow master is telling us to detach, to let go of, you know, those different letting go of those goals that say, oh, this is just for me or I have to be special. You know, I think that one thing that all of us tend to look away from is the need or the want to be special. You know, there's a beautiful anime and it's called The Tower of God. And it's not religious at all, actually. Um, but it has this beautiful scene in it where this girl um, you know, that one of the main characters, she goes to the tower because she wants to see the stars. And, you know, her friend who she found in, you know, this random cave or whatever, um, you know, wants to go with her because he's like, you're my best friend. Like, I want to go with you wherever you go. And she's like, no, I have to do this by myself. You know, you stay here and, and do whatever you're going to do. And so she goes into the tower. She meets the guardian and he goes, you know, I'm going to turn you invisible for a little bit. And, you know, then uh, the other main character comes and, you know, defeats this thing. And it's a whole big story. And the one line I will never forget that this kid with the main, with the second main character said, uh, the gate guardian to the main character said, it's not that you want to see the stars. You want to be a star. And, you know, the person, you know, the second main character is just like, oh, what? No, me want to be special. No, I want to see the stars. And, you know, the gate guardian can see into her heart and says, no, you don't want to see the stars. You want to be a star. And a lot of us don't really realize there's we have that need to be special and we have to go back. We have to look at, OK, who is the I that wants to be special here? Why does this I want to be special, more special than everyone else? You know, we have to remember, yes, we are all unique. We all have unique gifts that we can bring to the world. But those gifts do not make us special. They are a unique expression of the divine. But that's it. It doesn't make you special because all the children are special. So none of them are special. And that's what we always have to remember. So if we're trying to be more special than someone else, we're trying to be better than someone else, we have to really look at that and say, okay, why? Why do I feel that way? It goes back to that self-awareness, goes back into, okay, who is, who's the self that needs that feeling? Which will then lead us into the Swan Queen, transformation, intuition, and patience. And so the Swan Queen comes forth to say, okay, this is a, pay, you know, you got to be patient. You got to use your intuition because you are transforming. And really the, the funny thing is I'm actually kind of seeing in my mind, you know, these feathers kind of dropping off and, you know, like a, um, like a bird does when they molt, they let go of those old feathers to reveal the truth that's already there to, re to reveal the truth that is within them. And so we see that, you know, if we focus on, you know, the, the blessing, if we can express ourselves and then let go of the emotion, if we can really see, you know, where can I take a conscious action here instead of an unconscious reaction, we're going to really get to see, you know, this beautiful transformation. We're going to get more in tune with our intuition because we're more in tune with ourselves. And this does take patience. And patience is not a virtue. It is fruit of the soul, which must be cultivated. You know, we got to cultivate that fruit. We really have to be willing to do that work. And so now we're going to come to, excuse me, the Gateway Oracle. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the very first card, just as I open the box is this one, which is my life is truly guided, trusting, excuse me, your intuition. So absolutely beautiful. So it's saying, you know, we got to trust that intuition. Now there's always beautiful questions, um, in this deck. So let's see what beautiful questions we can ask ourselves about trusting our intuition. 
how can I access my intuition even more? And you know my favorite tool for doing this, hand over your heart, three deep breaths. On the third breath, we let out that ha sound. And then asking our heart and just simply saying, okay, my heart says, my intuition says. That's one great way to begin to access your intuition. It's by really engaging with it on a daily basis. Not just because, you know, there's something going on that you want an answer to, but really making sure that you're engaging with it every single day. And remember, we're not doing it to say, oh, well, I have intuition. I'm so intuitive. No, no, no. We're doing it because we know it's going to make our lives easier and we're going to be able to help others as well. If I knew what my higher self was trying to tell me, what would it be saying? This is a great journal prompt for you to write down or something you can take with you on a walk or something you can take with you when you're doing dishes, when you are folding laundry, when you're vacuuming, when you're making your bed, when you're on your lunch break. What would it be trying to tell me? And then you can do your exercise. Three deep breaths, hand over your heart. And my higher self says, my intuition says, my heart says. What is blocking my intuition and how can I heal this? So asking yourself that question, well, what's really blocking my intuition? Am I really willing to listen to it? You know, one of the things I talk about in my eight weeks of guidance course is one of the reasons our intuition is blocked is because we actually fear what it will say. And we don't really think about that. I think all too often we're like, yeah, I want to hear what my intuition has to say. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. But really there's this subconscious fear that your intuition is going to tell you to do something that you one, don't believe that you can do, and number two, not only that you don't believe that you can do, but that you don't believe is really guidance. So always being aware of that. So now let's go, okay, so the next card that just kind of fell off the deck uh, is emerging into grace. I open my soul to grace. So really asking us to open up to the truth of who we are, opening up to that ability to flow, that ability to just be graceful in no matter what we're doing, just to really embody that beautiful grace. So let's see what questions we can ask ourselves about emerging into grace. And then remember, if you guys are interested in your own personalized Miracle Mindset Monday, where you guys get your, where I have spirit guide me to the three decks for you, and then give you your own personalized Miracle Mindset Monday, please feel free to go visit my website, awakeningmiracles.org. So the questions we can ask ourselves, how does the spirit of grace want to work in my life? What has blocked it from filling my life in the past? If I truly let go and open myself to grace, what will unfold? So it's really asking, if I truly open myself to the divine essence that is within me, what's going to unfold? Like if I actually free myself of my limitations, if I actually free myself from, you know, this emotional baggage, if I actually allow myself to be in joy and be in gratitude and trust my intuition, what kind of life? might I have? So then let's see what our last card is for this week. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Okay. So we actually have two of these last cards. So I was talking about, you know, breaking free well, here we go. <laughs> Breaking barriers. I am expanding beyond limitation into joy and freedom. I mean, how absolutely beautiful. And then we have accept what is. I accept and embrace my inner majesty. So as we accept our inner majesty, we break through those barriers that we said we never could have, that we didn't know how. But I do want to go ahead and read the questions for these cards. So first, let's read Accept What Is. Is there anything that I am not accepting in my life? And I also want to add to this and say, is there anything or is there anything that I'm not accepting 
in myself? Is there some part of yourself that you're rejecting? How can I embrace myself and my life even more? How can I, how can I really accept that? How can I really begin to say, okay, you know, basically take responsibility. How can I take responsibility for this? What is, what is the part that I have played in this? That's always so, so important. Not only in your relationship with yourself and the relationship with the divine, but also in your friendships, in your marital relationships. Okay, what's the part that I'm playing here? Where will my life's journey take me if I truly honor every aspect of what is? Then let's go to breaking barriers. And the breaking barriers is, do I have any self-imposed barriers or limitations? Do you have any beliefs within you that tell you that you can't do something or that you're unable to do it? Or maybe you have this belief, you know, because teachers have instilled it in you. One of my favorite stories I love to tell people is from my own personal life. You know, when I had a teacher back in, you know, and a, a friend of mine, we call it the red marker. And so uh, anytime that uh, I start to doubt myself, I kind of pull out that red marker and remind myself. So a teacher uh, of mine back in like the fifth grade or something, basically got her red marker out and marked all over my paper after I was so proud of myself. You know, I put periods and commas and capitals and I thought, wow, this is like the best paper I've ever written. And, you know, I really tried to spell things correctly and basically was told this is a piece of shit and garbage. And so I felt really bad about myself. And I told myself from that time on, I can't write. That's what I kept telling myself. I can't write. I can speak. I can do all that. I'm very articulate, but I can't write. I'm not a good writer. And I then remember, you know, many, many, many years after that spirit being like, hey, you know, it's time for you to write a book. And I'm like, spirit, I can't. It's time for you to write a book. Spirit, I can't. It's time for you to write a book. Spirit, I can't. And then, you know, it just kept on coming and I kept on getting the message from multiple different places and people and things. And I was like, it's like, fine, spirit, you give me the book and I'll write it. Give me the first chapter. And I remember being on my walk and the chapter coming into my mind and I literally just voice recorded it. That's uh, as I was walking, it was a full on hour walk and I recorded this whole entire chapter of, of my book, which is now published and out there. It's the Intuitive's Tool Belt, if you're interested. Um, but you know, those were barriers and limitations I had, and I let those barriers and limitations go. And then bam, I'm an author. You know, the other great thing with that, I didn't know how I was going to promote the book. And, you know, I was trying to figure it out and I was like, I don't have the money for this and I can't do this. And then I let it go. I said, okay, here you go. Universe, you got this. I don't know what to do here. And then I called into Sonia Choquette's show. And, you know, she was like, how are you living your intuitive life? I told her that, you know, I was guided to write a book. I wrote the book and then it got published. And I told her, you know, the kind of the whole story behind that. And then she said, you know what I'm going to do for you? Send me your book and I'm going to put it in my newsletter for June. And I, my jaw dropped, tears running down my face because I didn't know how I was going to reach people. And now I have, you know, this woman who I idolize telling me, hey, you know what? Here you go. I'm going to get you, you send me your book. And I'm going to put it in my newsletter for June. I mean, I was crying because I was like, wow, like this is so amazing. Uh, are there any situations, people or places that I may need to step away from? What could my life be if I plowed through my blockages? So if I looked at them, recognized them, realized who is the self that's doing this or believes this and what would my life be like? So we have such a powerful week this week. If we're really willing to become self-aware, if we're willing to say, spirit, use this, please use this situation for the coming of my peace instead of for my destruction, being willing and able to express the emotion that we're feeling in that moment, no matter if it's, you know, happiness, sadness, whatever it is, and then as we do that, realizing who is the eye that's feeling this, we then get to reach for those stars, see the blessing, detach, and, you know, we express the emotion and then we let it go. We realize that we get to take conscious action instead of reactivity. 
we then get to, as we begin that process of really being like, okay, I want to take a conscious action here. We begin this beautiful transformational process as we really get more in tune with the truth of who we are and we get to cultivate, you know, we have to cultivate patience with ourselves. If we can be patient with others, we can be patient with ourselves. We then get to really see that we can trust our intuition. We can emerge into grace. We can accept what is and break through our own barriers and limitations. But it all starts with self-awareness. So I thank you for joining me. I thank you for being here. Once again, if you are interested in your own personalized Miracle Mindset Monday, please feel free to go visit my website, awakeningmiracles.org and enjoy your week this week. And remember, spirit, please use this for the coming of my peace instead of for my destruction. For those of you that follow me on my ACIM support page, I will be there in just a moment.